Yay! Any bash. It's the 23rd of June, 2018. I have to show you this. Unbelievable. I pull a random Bible verse like I do all the time. And it leads me to a study. I'll pull up the verse. I'll go to that chapter in scripture and I'll read it and study it. And today it pulls up Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Very, very interesting scripture to pull up today. <laughs> Talking about God, Elohim, plural, saying, let us make a man in our image. And so they just create a man and a woman. Okay, Genesis 1. But it tells a completely different story in Genesis 2. When God created man from the dust of the earth and breathed life into him, making a living soul, this is a different man. But I'm not going to get into that right now. The fact that this came up was just enough for me to want to do, obviously, study it some more. I've, I've studied this a lot, and I understand, the, I'm telling you, the Spirit's given me a lot of understanding of this. But the teaching of it is just not my cup of tea, but I think you get the gist of it. And so I'm studying this, right? Now, just through a series of different things, you know, I'm poking around the internet and I wind up on this page about Charles Spurgeon, who I, I heard of before, um, but I never really studied on him or anything. And apparently this guy, I mean, from what I understand here, he, he split with the Protestant church back in the 1800s because they were starting to accept Darwinism and evolution and all these things, just like we see today times a thousand you know the church is like not even a church in my view you know for a young you know christian myself what i have seen of churches are nothing like what i understand in scripture not even close but anyway right so this guy separated himself from the protestants and he believed a lot differently about the fall and you know an interesting point he made was what what was the original sin it, was it Satan's pride or was it Eve's unbelieving? You know what I'm saying? That's a really profound question. You know, the unbelief. You got to have something to believe in, right? And I'm, it's just crazy how this stuff works. Charles Spurgeon. So I just kind of like go away from that for a little bit. And I go to my headlines generator here. And I saw a couple of uh, articles right off the bat talking about this pride stuff. I mean, I, you can't get away from it. It's just shoved down your throat. So, you know, pride. I just look in pride and it, it's just off the hook. Pride, queer pride, uh, pride rides. Uh, it, it's off. The, it's crazy. So what ends up happening is I go to a couple of these pride pages. Okay. And we could sit here all day and look at the imagery all day long. And, and I can't help but ask these people who are behaving this way, does it fulfill you? Does it, does it give you that sense of peace and belonging that reaches deep down into your belly? Does it fill the emptiness? And I know the answer is no. And if you say it does, then you're a liar. But, you know, that's another story. But the symbolism, all of it's there. But what happened was I wind up on this one, right? This is Orange County Pride, OC Pride, Orange, 33, born this way with the unit. We could go through the imagery all day, like I said, but I got to show you this one thing. I'm scanning through this and look at right here on the 23rd today. They have their BU Festival at 307 North Spurgeon Street. I'm like, what? Come on now, Spurgeon Street. Yep. Sure enough, James or Charles Spurgeon, and they even spell it exactly the same way. So I'm like, oh, geez, I got to go check that out, right? So I go on the maps, and I'm in the process of getting my Google Earth back because I have so much to show you that just proves that Satan rules this earth in the flesh and that if you don't turn from it, recognize it and understand that you can't escape it without a savior this trap is just it's about to slam shut that's the best way i know how to put it all right but look at this this is where this gay parade is on spurgeon street right look at this here 
I just have to show you this. By the way, Spurgeon, he only had two kids, and they were twins of all things, right? And where this gay festival is, right, is right here, right across the street from 322 North Spurgeon. And if you look at this building, Spurgeon Street goes right through the center of these twin buildings here. Okay? I hope you're following me. And if we span out here, this right here is the exact same perspective. Exactly. I mean, to a T of those oil rigs and the Catalina and the Nuke. And there's Santa Ana right there, orange. The perfect perspective for that same exact scenario. I couldn't believe it. Spurgeon, huh? You know what I mean? God is just spectacular in how he leads us to things. Never try and understand the mind of God. <laughs> His thoughts are not our thoughts at all. He's just awesome. But anyway, this leads to a whole ton of other things that I want to show you guys. Um, but I'm kind of trying to get Google Earth going again, so I, I don't know when I'll get to some more stuff. But I had to show this. It was absolutely imperative that I show this. That that perspective is, it, it couldn't be more perfect than from that nuke that I saw going off out here. Just crazy. And we got similar things I'm seeing, I hate to say it, in San Francisco and New York. So I'm just going to throw this out there and, and let you all discern it. It's pretty heavy on my spirit when I see stuff like this. So, you know, this definitely didn't come from my brain. Anyway, it's a Sabbath, so Shabbat Shalom. Peace and grace to you all, okay? Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, 